So I'll go ahead. Uh, so after the professor's uh, lecture on colleagues and clinical scenarios, my brief in the next 20 odd minutes is how to deal with industry. Again, that's a very important topic. So we'll just briefly cover why should we focus on this? How does the industry actually collaborate with doctors? What steps need to be taken to uh, make it a more uh, profitable or a crystal clear, uh, you know, ethical relationship? Are there any legal sanctions in place which we should be aware of? And what are the final carry home messages? We all know that medical profession, patient and industry, this is a tripartite, you know, sort of an agreement or a relationship. I'm audible, no? Am I audible? Yes, sir, you're audible. Yes, sir. Okay, sir. Okay. Because the... Yes, sir, you're audible, sir. Thanks, thanks, sir. Thanks, sir. Because the industry makes products, prices, drugs, it cannot sell it directly to the consumer or the patient directly. The medical profession is the thing which sort of binds the industry and the patients together. The medical profession cannot, on the other hand, treat the patient without the drugs, without the devices, without other equipment which is manufactured by the industry. And we assume that by both industry and medical profession, although they are interdependent on each other, they work for the patient's benefit. And all these collaborative settings, whenever you collaborate with somebody, it provides the ground for emergence of potential conflict. It was always, always going to happen. And this was recognized way back in 1980, nearly four decades. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Sir, audible. audible. Sir, you are audible. So this was recognized nearly four decades ago when uh, NEGM published this article that Medical profession and industry should put the interest of the patient before that, before those of its stockholders. And this is a two-way benefit. Benefits to the medical science, research, and innovations always happen in a medical setting in labs and in hospitals. And only following physical collaboration with the industry does it translate into beneficial therapy. So physician collaboration is also mandatory. What is the benefit to the industry? The industry cultivates relationship with doctors because doctors are perceived as gatekeepers to all patients and any access or influence or gratitude from or to the doctors is considered as a potential good investment by the industry. And let's accept the fact that positive relationships with the industry does result in more use of their so although these are mutually beneficial, these lines can get blurred and these potentially ethical relationships can deteriorate into a conflict of interest due to various things, honor area, compensation, payment for research trials, gifts, etc. And all these honor area, compensation or whatever I have written over here, these payment for research trials, they are often driven by where exactly in the medical hierarchy you stand in the hospital. What specialization are you in and where is the location of it? So I'll elaborate in subsequent slides. Does a relationship actually exist? If you look at published data, this is again published in NEGM. When physicians in the West were polled, 9 out of 10 reported some kind of industry relationship, varying from drug samples, gifts, reimbursement for meetings, consultancy fees, enrolling patients in trials. The physicians in solo or group practices were more likely to be targeted or more likely to be, you know, involved with the industry than those in government hospitals. And this entanglement led to a definite commercialization of clinical medicine. And hence it prompts a closer look to see if any of these interactions are actually harmful. How does the industry collaborate with physicians? There are various ways. So we'll just again briefly cover them. We all know them, but again revising what are the various ways in which industry can collaborate with us. Visits to medical students, doctors. A medical rep on an average visits a doctor about four to five times a month. And information during these meetings, the industry perceives that it is likely to increase the likelihood of prescribing that product. However, 
we have to realize that often information which is imparted to us in meetings may not always be correct may not always be ethical may be just promotional so we have to be very very balanced when the medical rep tells us about a drug we have to draw our own inferences from it not believe what they say because if we don't do that it will be non rationality of usage of new drugs second choice drugs will very often be used use of non generic compounds which will increase the cost to the patient and this is again published data that if you don't handle this relationship well it can affect your prescribing peer lead to irrational prescribing and increasing the cost of healthcare to the patient how do the patients medical students or doctors feel about the relationship of doctors with medical rep so if you look at the patients this is again data which has been published from the west when patients who were enrolled in cancer trials or medical or surgical branch trials they were interviewed many believed that a doctor industry relationship is perhaps beneficial to patients so that is a very welcome sign and that often happens because many patients trust their physicians that despite interacting with the industry we have their best interests at heart so we have to keep that trust intact if you look at medical students you know our exposure to medical reps or to the industry starts right from internship from house job days and again data which has been reported in the web primarily says that 3/4 of the doctors when they were polled they found that company materials were a good way to learn about new drugs but again four out of five were intelligent enough to realize that the reps may exaggerate the benefits and downplay the risk so you know they were smart enough to realize that this could happen and these about 70% of them felt that even getting gifts would not influence the practice so people are pretty sure about where they stand in their own ethical domain when you look at senior doctors often interventionists feel that their interaction with industry is different from physician and it is rightly so it does happen because you know for instance intensivists like dr abzal or interventionists like me would probably feel that when you interact with the industry you might give them some feedback about how to improve their devices and that is why industry feedback to us is also very very important in terms of device interventions physicians for instance uh, dr punita is there she is a uh, you know mainly deals with oncology and radiotherapy so their interaction with industry would probably focus more on how to develop alternative therapies or newer drugs so it will differ from specialty to specialty and interestingly 60% of the doctors believe that incentive did not influence their own practice however only 15% believe that this was true for their colleagues so that is a bit of a downer that we often have more trust in ourselves rather than in our own colleague but by and large when this is again data which has been published when doctors were polled they found that all these things which were marked in red like drug samples journal reprints of books sponsored grand rounds registration fee for conferences etc may not be a bad way to interact with the industry however other things which are obviously you know like meal social events sponsored market survey sponsored research products or sponsored fellowships they were considered an absolute no no by the doctor but mostly the doctor believed that institution should have their own rules and one should have more workshops like this which dr punita is doing to educate us how to you know make a industry doctor relationship more ethical so how does this interaction happen we have covered visits to medical students and doctors there are various other ways in which things can happen industry sponsored cmes if you look at the last decade or so data shows that nearly 60% of all scientific cmes were actually you know funded by the industry professional medical association offer endorse industrial products in fact interestingly this is again data which shows that american academy of family physician when it started a campaign against obesity coca cola was actually a sponsor so you know sometimes these lines get blurred so badly that when you get your you know conference endorsed or sponsored you don't even look at who is sponsoring so that is a bad thing to happen most research or fellowships in the west fail about few years ago but being funded by the industry and in fact it's the truth if you look at my 
cardiology without industry there would be no statins no regulatory stents no icds that is defibrillators and this funding becomes even more important as the government is now decreasing its commitment to basic and clinical research so my you know we might need the industry for trials as well how to actually manage that we will discuss shortly and lastly the industry gets involved with us in terms of as i said in conducting trials publishing journals and in our organization so we look at journals sometimes industry support the entire journal by giving publishing charges by offering online free subscriptions by advertisements etc the bmj usa nearly 90000 dollars a month is paid for fully by industry advertising and once the journals get involved heavily with the industry bias comes in the usefulness of the article comes down we all know that industry sponsored research if it is not managed ethically it tends to favor the industrial product and often there are no definitive guidelines or best practices how to get industry sponsored reviews or journals under proper scrutiny so we have to have those guidelines in place industry often conducts what is called as screening trials that is simply to get the doctors to prescribe their drug which are often scientifically meaningless trials and actually not original research switching trials wherein the patient is switched from one drug to the new treatment doctors are often paid large sums for the so industry can also support us in our professional organizations and if you see by and large nearly 50% of the most of the professional organization are currently being funded by the industry and often this is done to gain favor with the leadership board members and i am sure some degree of trade off does happen when the funding is from a for profit enterprise like pharmaceutical industry so there is a potential conflict of interest involved here as well industry is known to influence drug trials in very various ways so i'm just reiterating all this so that when you grow up and you know you go out in the world avoid getting you know entangled in such relationships which are likely to tarnish your image because these industry sponsored trials often replicate the same data selectively publish the data negative trials are never published knowledge of adverse re- drug reactions is often withheld and this is not you know this is not just a philosophical talk if you see in the germany gabapentin the ma- data was manipulated and the guidelines recommended gabapentin but ultimately they were withdrawn similarly the psoriasis psoriasis guidelines included this drug but ultimately in uk the national institute of health and care then withdrew this drug as far as Erythropoietin is concerned. Again, there was a conflict of interest when this was included in the guidelines because Amgen, which was the main, you know, provider of erythropoietin, was the sponsor of the guidelines. And this is not; it does not happen in cardiology because widespread use of statin and intracardiac defibrillators is also being sponsored by the industry in coming into the guidelines. So that is unfortunate. But what we should do? Steps to be taken for medical CMEs. have control over the scientific content and speakers do not have company control presentations or slides company logos for journals what the bmj does is the editorial attempt does not review any claims which are made by the advertisement in fact they encourage the readers to criticize any industry sponsored literature which is being published and they encourage them to complain as well so that is the steps which good journals do take for trials no company is allowed uh, company rep is allowed to sit on the executive committee of the trials academic participants of course do not accept any honorary from the companies and the statistical confirmation of the data is done by external academic sources the trialists always have access to the database and right to publish the result the industry sponsor does not participate in writing the manuscript or publishing the data and of course industry funding is mentioned in the patient information booklet so that is the way you can ethically participate in a industry sponsored trial legal sanctions if you look at the west this was a sunshine act which we should all be aware of it was passed in the us in 
it mandates public disclosure of all payments which are made to doctors by the medical company so everything is in the public domain consulting honoraria grant research even gifts and food travel so people have to be very very careful in the west remember the sunshine act does not prohibit physician industry relationship it only says that this data is available to the public new compliance requirements are there so the doctors should be very very careful in whom they are collaborating with and in what way they are collaborating there are various exempt in the sunshine act primarily educational materials expert witness fees and of course samples which are not for sale if you look at the mci we should all be aware of these are the rules do not accept gifts travel facilities hospitalities cash grants if you are taking any funding it has to be uh, you know reviewed and re uh, only through approved institutions and it has to be disclosed if it is a research proposal which is funded clearance from the relevant ethics committee has to be done if source of the funding disclosed and freedom to publish the results of the trial or the research has to be inserted in the mou at the outset only the mca also says that one may work for these industrial groups in advisory capacities as consultants researchers provided your integrity freedom is not compromised patients interests are not compromised and all the affiliation affiliations are within the law and are disclosed you should not endorse drug products and you should always try to maintain your professional autonomy so these are the 10 guidelines which the mci tells us nowadays ultimate hurt our relationship so what it has happened in the west in the usa when they imposed these sanctions they found that the young doctors who were just passing out as graduates or as students if they wanted to say a positive thing about an industry or a good industry physician relationship they did not want to come out they wished to remain anonymous because they were worried it would affect their careers would their patients trust them would they be able to publish or write review articles and editorials in good journals so all these doubts started creeping in people's mind and it was seen that in states in the us where the sunshine act was implemented in 2010 2011 cmes conferences grants for trials pg programs started getting cancelled or they were markedly curtailed because legal sanctions will always deter people and what they found was people then started they, they started doing studies they found that this strict legal sanction could possibly impact future innovations and development because sponsors were unable you know they were unwilling to take part in medical research and in fact newsweek ran a poll right after the implementation of the sunshine act and the people were concerned about the slow pace of medical research since the onset of the sunshine act majority of the public supported the collaboration of doctors because they felt that it was good for technological advancement and they said that increasingly tight legal sanctions could perhaps reduce the pace of innovation so what personally i feel that medicine or surgery or critical care or intensive care is very very technology dependent today industry collaboration is vital for research education quality improvement but at the same time we should know that although industry will give us support it may also provide incentives which can potentially influence our choices so medical cur curriculum dr afzal also said that curriculum at present does not teach us about communication it does not even teach us about how to handle a good industry physician relationship so curriculum should have these policies in place both at the regulatory body level at the institutional level and the personal level regulatory bodies need to do while the guidelines urge the doctors to stick to ethical conduct there is no formal directive towards the industry so even the industry has to be tightened up there is no use just sanctioning the doctors despite the mci coming up with guidelines not many of us are aware of the rules so these rules have to be made more public it is our duty to be familiar with these rules more visibility 
of these rules through awareness programs like this what dr punita is conducting john hopkins which is the you know the consider it as the you know hub of medical research and ethics they have these guidelines drug samples are not acceptable unless they are for patient use like inhalers other program vouchers etc no gifts books posters if they are donated by the industry or academic grants should not bear industry logos site access by reps reps should be regulated tightly and the doctor should engage with the industry only in focused ways with no potential personal benefit so these policies have to be drawn by various institutions at a personal level declare conflicts of interest people often donate their consulting fees to philanthropic charity there is difficulty in set and exists between the doctors and the industry we just need to be very clear what that relation is the relationship between physicians and doctors is a fiduciary relationship that is it's a relationship which is based on trust so we should not erode that trust trust answer is not giving a collective industry hug to the industry you know we, but we should not become so tied down to industrial support that we cannot function without that support transparency is the key focus should be on transparency and ethically managing a physician industry relationship because we are here for patient benefit we assume the industry is here for a patient benefit as well so rather than shying away from any relationship at all it is our right or our you know duty to manage that relationship in a ethical and good way and that will be the best way rather than having potential threats of sanction thank you